I conquered the Maryland streets racing scene. I beat everybody in a late model car that is outside, period. The world's fastest track hawk runs a Demon TKM 426. It has a simple speed and performance transmission. It's rated for 2,000 horsepower. Track hawk will forever be the baddest Whipple track hawk ever built, ever. I want to race Hezzy back. He's been ducking me. He won't <laughs> lock in with us. Mercedes came out with a car at the E55. It was from 03 to 2006 at a 5.5 liter supercharged engine it was a unit made 469 horsepower from the factory in 2003 which was like insane yeah. i don't even care about the money when we street race it's all about the glory i want to win in front of the whole world that is what i love the money i can make money a million different ways a lot of people are scared to even take that risk i relish it i love it Welcome back to another episode of the Street Alpha Podcast. I am your host, Tooks, and today we are out here in Maryland. You guys have requested to have our guest today on the podcast. So as you guys know, my job is to travel and make that happen for you guys. So appreciate you guys for listening. Appreciate the subs as well. So today we have James from RSP. Let's clap it up for James. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So long drive here. Yeah. In Shitty the weather. Yeah. But um, I'm super happy I made the drive out here as always. So James, for those who are listening, James has the world's fastest S-Class, right? Yes. S, which, 65. S-65. Denomination. Yep. These are our micro records, by the way. I wanted to make sure I made that clear before. Yeah. Uh, he has the fastest 211 E63. And of course, as you guys know, he has the world's fastest track hawk at the moment, right? Yeah. At forever. <laughs> I, only say, I only say that because of Ripetoons episode. As you guys know, you, you were... Uh, talked about on there a lot yeah i and just wanted to take a too. moment and apologize for my son's bad mouth they were out of control your son yeah my son i've been spanking them all last year i don't know what got <laughs> in their mind that day but i guess we got to go back to the same old thing this year and show them who's boss you talk about uh adam adam steve and tony okay so can you give a little bit of context to who adam i mean if the people who haven't seen that episode you guys should check that out on the channel as well so um Basically, in Maryland, we have a real big street racing scene. And okay. um, Adam was the previous only track out on the scene. And uh, when I came out, um, what was it, 2001, we came out. It was the summer of 2001. Uh, 2001? 2021. 2021. Like, 2001. Yeah. I was like it in was fifth a, grade, bro. It was a middle of COVID, 2021. Uh, everybody was outside roll racing. There was nothing to do. Um, I was outside of my C63 with pure turbo, spanking everybody. Uh, and everybody kept telling me, yo, you guys should go up to Baltimore behind the lows and dig and dig. And I was like, I wasn't really into the dig scene. It wasn't anything that even caught my attention. For the past like 10 years, I've been making my own cards fast right. and chasing records um, in the Mercedes scene. I didn't really, never really thought of street racing. And uh, the guys told me to go up to the lows. They told me to hit this guy up, Wong. Um, he had a 240, so I hit him up with my E63. At the time, I had a 2019 E63 all done up, and uh, I went up to the parking lot. Wong ignored me, and then this guy came with the 340. His name was, uh, Ch what was it, Chase? Chance. Chance, and um, that was my first street race. The whole Everybody was betting against me. Uh, really? There's a video of it, and yeah, everybody, I got the Beamer, I got the Beamer. And uh, I slept, still put two cars on the 340, and from that moment, I was hooked. It was digs, digs, digs. That's all I could think about. And um, it's funny, on the way home from that race, I actually hit a deer. And, what? Uh, yeah, my, my E63 was toast. I dealt with this terrible shop in uh, Elk Ridge. They fucked the car up. They didn't bleed the coolant right. They gave me the car back. I hit the gas one time. The head lifts. Car's totaled, right? Wow. Um, so I'm sitting there. I get paid out by the insurance. I said, well, what's next? I said, well, you know, I'm going to do something different. For the past 10 years, I've been buying AMGs, making them as fast as I could. I said, I'm going to try a track hawk. You know, these look cool. I saw this guy out in our area racing it. Yeah. He was winning. Um, I said, I can do that. And I did it. And I went, I went uh, to Coons and Tyson's. I bought it. You know, no money down. Out the door, 45 minutes in and out the dealer. They made it too easy. <laughs> um, and then... I don't know. I think it lasted three days full interior before we ripped everything out. And we were oh, so it was gutted. 
Oh, yeah. It is. <laughs> there isn't anything in that track card. Um, a lot of people ask me why we got the track cards, and I think it's a good point to say, like, if you're out racing, you could spend thousands of dollars on power or just take some weight out or do both and yeah. be ahead. So, yeah. like, when we, when we build a car here, the big thing is we define the expectation of a customer. We, we find out what they want. What do you want to do and how much do you want to spend? And I create a recipe around that for each individual person. You never hear somebody saying they're unhappy with the performance of their Jeep or their track or, or their Hellcat period when they leave here because we just deliver. We don't stop till you're happy. And um, my body of work has proven that, you know, through and through. So can we backpedal a little bit to the Mercedes? Because yeah. uh, you're actually the first person that I know on the podcast that has or knows about that platform. I don't so even think I've there, driven There's one. some real good history with the Mercedes stuff, and it actually leads into the Hellcat. Okay. Mercedes owned Chrysler in the early 2000s, right? And they Mercedes came out with a car, I'm sure everybody remembers it, the E55. It was from okay. 03 to 2006. It had a 5.5 liter uh, supercharged engine. It was a three-valve motor, single overhead cam. It was a unit made 469 horsepower from the factory in 2003, which was like insane. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really the precursor to the Hellcat. Big really? V8, blower, automatic transmission, goes fast in a straight line, one trick pony. And um, that, that's, that's where I started. I, I started with the S55 and the E55. Those were like, I got in it and I was just like, you can buy something with 469 horsepower. Like, are you kidding me? Like back then 200 horsepower was a lot. So yeah, that was my dream car when I was like 16. And then when I was, uh, I think it was like 2008, I bought my first S55 actually. And then I got an E55 and I had a CLK. I actually was the first person in the world to transfer the E55 motor into a CLK 55 into the coupe. Um, and it was, it was great. I figured it all out. I made my own wiring harness. I never sold it to anybody. It was something I did myself. Right. If you could actually go on the forums and search G60 wall, Mercedes-Benz forums, and you'll see my name going back to like 2005. Wow, um, that's a damn that's, Yeah, Yeah, I've been, that's I've, a been different era right now. I've been in the Mercedes scene heavy. And anybody that's in the Mercedes scene actually knows me well, it's like period. I'm just solidified. I'm like on Mount Rushmore of the Mercedes scene. <laughs> but... um. You know, that platform is so unique, it's so expensive that it's not something where you, if you want to go fast in a Mercedes, you got to figure it out yourself. Right. There's no, there's no market. There's no parts. Everything we did, we made billet motor mounts. We, we made our own custom torque converters at the time. And I mean, you would get it from a, a NAG1, but you could get a higher stall torque converter. Um, we made our own downpipes. We did everything. We, we literally, I took that car. It was a... 2006 s65 and it was going 10.9 at 127 which back then was like a big, then, a big deal you know deal, i yeah. was i was literally you know six tenths faster than anybody in the world at that time and the record actually still stands to the day um it's pretty it's pretty impressive uh like guys in dubai like the sheiks with the big turbos and the unlimited yeah, budgets that was my next question. yeah they yeah. they couldn't get to it and i i mean i still get messages to this day to my old email g60 wall Hey, how do you do this on the V12? How do you do that? Um, I made a lot of my connections in the in the industry with the Mercedes stuff. Yeah. The first big tuner that I worked with was uh, Jerry at Eurocharged. I don't know if you ever heard of Eurocharged. Nah, They're like not familiar. probably the biggest Mercedes tuner in the world um, now. Back then, we were all just guys, you know, trying to make it, trying to make our cars fast. He was a tuner, and uh, Jerry basically introduced me to all the key people that helped me get to where I am today in the car world. Period. Overall, everything. I mean, even it even led into the Mopar scene. Jerry's the one who hooked me up with the guy that used to tune for the shop for the first year that we were in business, uh, Edgar at DSM Lights. Um, you actually showed a truck he tuned, that black Trackhawk that went 8.7. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's Edgar. That's who I learned everything from. Um, guy's a genius, hands down. I mean, just being around him, I sucked up more information than anybody, you know, and, and now here I am, I'm tuning and making trucks faster than anybody in this field, you know, and I got to thank Edgar for that because he, he definitely pulled his skirt up and showed me a lot. 
So you you said that the Mercedes is what introduced you into street racing, right? Yeah. So then you got the track walk after I got the track walk. after the uh, the insurance and so on, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, can you talk about some of the first races with? with that car so aside from what you already spoke about so my first race with the track hawk i'll never forget i was just i thought i was invincible i got in it i think it went 11 1 at like 123 and i was like i'm invincible here we go these, you, is this is this draggy though or this is at the track like no draggy numbers? draggy okay, okay. draggy in maryland we have a few streets that we frequent for racing you got lily pond 70 dorsey and Tippett. those are the big four tracks that like i like to call okay. it and um I would go to Lily Ponds. It's the closest to my house. And uh, I went out there. It went like 11-1. I was like, okay, let's go. Everybody can get it. And uh, <laughs> we, the first race was a Bell and his, um, S, what is it, S6 he had? Yeah, he had the S6. And um, I, I gave him the break for 3,000 and got creamed. Like, he put like six cars on me. And, uh, I mean, that, that was the start. That was the start. Then eventually I just, we got home. I put a pulley on the car. Mm. I tuned it. And then we locked back in for the same pot two days later. And I gave him a car in the break and put like three cars on him. He, he didn't even stay in it past the eighth mile. And um, Damn. we just started hitting the scene heavy after that. I mean, we were outside. You got to understand too, this was like at the when COVID was dwindling down. Nobody had anything to do. Everybody yeah. was outside. Everybody had pockets full of money. And um, everybody was racing. It was, I felt like it was every night during COVID, we had something to do. And the relationships I, I've, I've started with those guys that I met those nights and stuff, like I feel like I got lifelong friends. All my guys are here. Like, yeah, I see that. Yeah, so like we, we really here. rock together. And, uh, it's it's been cool. It's given me a different purpose. I feel like you know, like it, it's just exciting every day, every week. We got right. something new going on, something on the gram and the group chat, and it's like it's the guys. Like it's dope. So now, all these races early on with the track hawk, right? Um, were any of them in New York? Like how did how did how did you get known to you know? So basically, after the S six race, I started going on the scene. We we cracked off a Supra. Uh, that guy Dan, a Mark Five, yeah, new Supra. Okay. Um, he was just like a pure turbo car. And then after the Supra, I think it was JB. Um, it was a ZL1 built by LMP. Uh, we raced heads up on Lily Pond. I put like eight cars on him. It was bad. And then after eight JB, cars. we went to this. Uh, this it was a local tuner at the time. You don't hear much of him anymore, but as his name's Habibi, and uh, he had a red ZL1, and. Um, he claims to have like this fastest stock bottom end ZL1, whatever. Um, but basically the first race from New York. No, no, no. From Maryland. Okay. We didn't get to, we didn't make it to New York yet. <laughs> um, I'll lead into that. But, uh, with, with Habibi, um, his, my first race with him is I gave him a car in the break and they, you know, I didn't know how vicious the break was, even though my first race, I got creamed. I still, I just thought I was invincible in the Hawk and, uh, yeah. I gave Habibi one in the break and he spun a little bit and I still beat him. <laughs> and Damn. then we raced heads up and I beat him again. And then I was making all these posts saying that the LT4 was trash <laughs> and I was just going in saying I was, the, uh, I was killing all the LT4s. And then this guy, Dell, yeah. um, yep. probably the fastest rear wheel drive car in Maryland, I would say. Really? Late model. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, consistent. I mean, he he's went to New York and won. He's right, won down right. here. Um, I raced Dell. He put me in my place. <laughs> uh, and then um, I think after the Dell race, that's when we we locked in with Hezzy. And uh, now this is in 2021. This right? is 2021. Yeah, not 2000. <laughs> 2021. Um, I think it was Rock NYC's like first race he he ever vlogged. Oh, really? Um, yeah. It was like it was way back. Um, has he yeah. probably had a few thousand followers? Yeah. I had like 300 followers. We're nobodies. This is when his car was like white. White, yeah. and it was slow. <laughs> it, well, it was quick enough to be me that day. It looked but, pretty, yeah, it yeah. looked pretty quick on the, on the video. Which, well, I uh, gave him the break, though. So, uh, But basically, that night, um, I had a mutual friend that me and Hezzy both knew, this mm -hmm. guy named Alex, who's a tuner in New York. He set up the race. Hezzy said he wanted the break for my track hawk. Yeah. Mind you, I just went like 999 on Draggy, and I was like, it's over. 
I am literally invincible. Nobody can beat me. I said, we are good, you know. We were taking crazy races. I think, what was that guy, Nuru? We raced uh, on 70. We were at the E85 pump. This is before the Hezzy race. And that Mustang comes up, big single turbo Coyote, big mm -hmm. tire. And we go, hey, does that thing work on the street? What does it do from zero? Da, 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 da. The guy, Nuru, locks in with me. I think it was like, what, $1,500 a side or something? It was a small pot for COVID time. And uh, we, <laughs> we go out to 70. And he's probably got an eight-second Fox he's, uh, yeah. Mustang, and um, he put it right in the wall. He crashed. He didn't even make it. What was it? To the 330? Yeah, 330, what? and he just macked it. And uh, at that point, I was like 6-0 six, six and oh or something. I hadn't even lost, too. I was just – my head kept getting bigger and yeah, bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what led, I think it was after the new race. That's when we went to New York and we raced Hezzy. And, so um, you were undefeated before you went to New York, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then Hezzy kind of ended that. Yeah, Hezzy definitely, de Hezzy, that race with Hezzy was real. Like, I put the most money I'd ever put in a pot. And uh, yeah, I definitely, he, I gave him the break. He beat me by like a fender. But uh, that race, I, on the steps, I had told him, you have five seconds to leave. Right. So when the slow-mo video was like 5.3 seconds, right? Yeah. So I was like, I'm not paying. The stip is the stip. I'm standing 10 toes on it. And we were in New York. There was like 30 guys around us. They're all around me. <laughs> the, some of the people I went there with that I, you know, that I just met, they all yeah. like backed away. Like, oh my God, I was there with two of my cousins. And we're like, we're not paying. And you know, nothing happened. We got up out of there. They didn't do shit. Uh, so was, do you think that I don't know I feel like when I came back from New York that time and I, I you know New York had got over on Maryland a few times okay that's yeah yeah I so when I it. came back I felt like man what's the big deal about New York eh, right we did what we wanted up there what are you guys doing you know do you think that kind of started a thing though between Maryland and uh in New York to where it was like a not take kind think, of situation I think the one stock or do you think that your situation was was no nah, no nah, we me and Hezzy weren't a big deal then okay it, so it was, was more low key. Yeah, it was time. more low key. Like that kind of springboarded. I think it springboarded Hezzy to where he is now. And it probably put me back a little bit because I lost and then right. I had to come back. But uh, yeah, the first big race where nobody paid, I feel like, since I've been out, yeah. was the workhorse uh, one stock race. And it's kind of, I, I mean, they said he crossed. They said, right? What was the deal with that one? It was the red car. They said he crossed and he didn't cross. And it was a whole thing. I think I, feel I don't like, think he crossed. I don't think I don't. I feel like but, I feel like he was initially. This is just my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I try to stay away from that. Yeah. But I feel like initially he was going to pay. And then I think when somebody brought it to his attention that that's, you know, he's, you know, did he cross or not? Then it became so it's, an issue. it's like this, right? When you're done a street race, you get back win or lose, right? Yeah. You come in, the, you come in the circle, you go like this and you smell the air. And if it smells like pussy, you do not pay it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, what's it gonna smell like? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's he about to say? <laughs> but uh, nah, like, you know, like that's how it is. You get done a street race, you come back to the thing and you yeah. feel it out. And you're not, this isn't no sanctioned event. There's no real rules. You're right. outside and it's men. So if you can get over on somebody, you're gonna get over on them, right or wrong. I'm not saying that it is, but. Yeah. That's kind of how street racing is. And I get why some people shy away from that challenge. I, I love it. Right. You know what I mean? I'm built for it. That's my kind of vibe. I want to fight for what's mine. I want to argue. You know, I have no problem with that. So, so, so but doesn't the flagger determine basically like who gets it is? Paid? But the bigger the street race, the flagger kind of gets pushed aside. Like, really? Like the flagger doesn't, unless you have a strong flagger, somebody with strong say or like. That's respected. That's respected. respected yeah. The flaggers always fold to whoever they think is more important. And it, it sucks, but it's, it's part of the deal. Like if you want a straight fair race, go to the track. If you want the glory on the street, you got to fight for it. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's what I love. That's so what I love. in that race specifically that you're mentioning, um, do we know who the flagger was? I mean, we don't want to say names, but was it somebody? Who, who was flagging that race? Somebody I from think New it was York. somebody okay. from New York. So does that make it worse because? See, no, 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 no. The first one on one and nine. The one you, where you guys came to New York. Yeah, I was there. I came for that race. You know, like 
I would say back then, maybe now everybody's so established. Like Workhorse is a big shop. Right. So nobody's going to throw them off the side like they can get over on them. Um, so I don't I don't know if it really has to do with with that. But uh, I know that <laughs> the Workhorse guys definitely got played that first race. That's for sure. Well, yeah. talk about it. What's what's your take on that one? Well, I mean, obviously they won, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it went down to steps, but like, I feel it. Like I feel what one stock did. Like I've done the same thing. If you don't feel like you have to pay and you can get off with it, then dance. You know what I'm saying? So that's very controversial. It is. It is. I feel, it, you know, and and you could say that it's a bad taste, or you could say all this stuff, but it is what it is. And if you go home with your money in your pocket, who cares what anybody thinks? Right. Like, now, do you think that it kind of kills the sport of like street racing? Because I feel like people think that it's like you can't even go out and have a fair race with somebody. And then, you know, if you win straight, if you win straight up. And if you're trying straight, to race fair, you go to the track. That's okay. all I have to say. If you think it's going to be fair behind the Lowe's parking lot on the West Baltimore, <laughs> let me tell you, you're in for a surprise. Like, that makes you know, sense. That makes sense. It's just the reality of it. And if you're not accepting that, you're going to be let down. You're going to have hurt feelings. If you know what it is. You come in a party, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's what I do. That's what I love. Like So, all right, it's kind of a weird question, but like how do you let's say let's say I wanted to go on street race, right? And I took my car here or I brought my car to Maryland. What should I do to make sure I get paid? Should I bring people? Yeah, oh yeah. You gotta like, come heavy. Yeah. If you're just not, for the people if, who are watching who's trying to get in the street if race. If you're right? nobody and you're just Joe Blow, it's really hard to go out there and and, and do it when you don't know anybody. It's almost like, it's almost like, uh, I, what's the word? It's like, um, it would not death, but it's like, it's just signing up yourself up for failure. Like you got to go out with your team, mm -hmm. your friends. You got to go out tested on that road. You got to know how the flag works. That's like, another thing too. Yeah. You don't even know. Um, like I've heard of things where people test at certain spots, and if you're gonna run there. Sometimes, you know, they kind of set you up a little bit depending on which lane you're in. Well, yeah, like if you don't know the tracks, right. like I like to say, you'll get stepped. Like we have a road. What is that road up in? Uh, we got a road north of Baltimore. Okay. That right lane is clean and left lane is dirty. And if you <laughs> don't know, you'll go up there, lock in and get put in left lane and you're donating because it's a dirty lane. Um, uh, so you but you got to no, no, no. You tell somebody, you know, hey, come up to my road. I'm going to take right lane. You take left lane. And if you're sweet and you don't know racing, you're going to agree to it because you think your car's faster, not knowing that they're all the other extenuating factors of actually street racing. Damn, you're giving out some, some like, <laughs> 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 no, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think, I think a lot of people, um, when they start getting into street racing, I think they just get excited. They don't even think about these things, you know? I mean, I, I was a victim. Like, right. So I, I loved it. And it's intoxicating to be there at the light with all the people, cell phone videos out, the guy in the middle, you're breaking the law. I mean, <laughs> I can't tell you a more fun thing to do than those eight, nine seconds going down the quarter mile on the street, on betting the street. a big money with all your friends betting on you against another state or another team that you've been arguing with all week on Instagram. I mean, it, it changed my life. Like, yeah, I feel like this is like my purpose now. Like, this is what I love to do. I've changed my whole life. I started this whole shop behind it. Right. Um, I never thought I'd do maybe be a mechanic or have a performance shop. It was always my pastime. And it was really in the middle of COVID where I was like, you know what? I'm going for it. Like after after that guy messed up my E63 at that shop, I was like, "This guy's an idiot, and he's got two, three million a year coming through the door." Yeah, there's a lot of shops like, like that. Watch yeah. this, and uh, we're two years in. We're booked out three months. You know what I mean? Um, we just built our own turbo kit. You know the the possibilities are endless, and that by the end of this year, I think I will be in an even better place than we are coming into this year. So, would you say mostly? Track hawks that you work on here? So Dodge. We, we specialize on the on the Mopar platform, but specifically the GPEC 2A ECU. That consists of basically any late model Mopar right out right now. The V6 Pentastar, the 5.7, the 6.4, and the Hellcat. They all run the same ECU, okay. um, which I've really put my 110% focus over the past two years 
making myself aware of the inner workings of this ECU so I can give my customers the better, the best possible product, right? Um, When I first started the shop, I was tuning with this company called Dusterhoff. Oh, yeah, I heard his name. He was mentioned. But amazing tuner, has some of the fastest Hawks Hellcats out there. Awesome. Um, When I went into business with my shop, from my connections in the Mercedes world, yeah. I was pushed towards Edgar, which was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. But um, working with Edgar was amazing. Like I was putting cars out. We were putting fast cars out with no problems. People, you know, my name's getting bigger. We're lining people up to the shop. But I got so big that I, he couldn't really provide the service that I needed to run a business. Right. I can't wait. For you to get off work or for the other three customers because you know like i get your customers are more important than mine but that inherently is a problem for my business right so like i never started the mopar shop or the track hawk shop thinking i was going to be a tuner me tuning was just out of necessity to provide the product for my business and um once i started tuning i was basically the whole community was like, oh, he's stealing tunes and oh, he's doing that. And it's, it was just like, it, cra- it probably put the business back six, eight months because we had a few situations. Um, I'd like to speak on it. It is, uh, I had a TRX we put a Whipple on, right? Okay. And I was just starting tuning it and I was having a problem with this thing opening the bypass over 6,200 RPMs. So, one of my, you know, local connections was this guy, Mish, uh, tuner out of Philly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember I reached out to him. It was like 11 o'clock. I was like, Mish, I am going in circles on this truck. You got any ideas? He was like, no problem, brother. Look in your email. I put this tune in the car. Motor blows up. Doesn't even make it to 30 miles an hour. Explodes. And then the next day, Rip Tune's posting it all over the TRX forms. And I'm just like... I'm like, damn. So he, they really just sabotaged me. How like, do they find out about it, though? Because I'd se- I, when the motor blew up with yeah. Misha's tune, I said, Mish, the motor just blew up. He was like, send me pictures. And I showed him, and then he sent it to Ripatune. And then they posted it all over the world. Oh, he blows up motors. Just like they said, I have a blown up motor coupon. And it's just like, are you kidding me? So who like, should you be upset with, though? Uh, in that situation. I'm upset with myself. Okay. Because I fair, put fair. my business in the hands of somebody else. And in terms, I put my customer mm-hmm. success in terms of somebody else and it didn't work. It's really my fault. Right. So, you know, I, I was, I, I don't know if this was the right move or the bad move, but I got on the phone, called the customer, said, look, I made a bad decision with your vehicle. The motor broke. I'm going to pay for everything. And, um, I'm just blessed. Like every customer I've had in here, the guy's total stand-up guy. He listened to me, said, look, I wanted to go fast. Like, yeah. and we're putting a whip on the stock like TRX. Up, yeah. Like, I don't even care that it break. Let's get a 426. So like these guys tried to sabotage me and it went from a disaster to just, now I built this monster TRX for this guy. It was great. Biz- it was a huge job for the company. Mm-hmm. It, um, it actually ended up turning out well, but... That's when I really realized that these guys are like against me. Like they're out to stop me feeding my family. I was, that's when the gloves, that's when my sleeves started getting pulled up. So now before that though, you knew who they were, right? Uh, Ripitune? Yes. Uh, or Steve or, or Tony. Was, it's, it's crazy. I didn't realize Rippa was his last name. I thought it was called Rippa because they rip shit off. Like I didn't <laughs> realize that that was actually his name. Yeah, like exactly. seriously. Because all his products, like the Incognito was a ripoff from Tim Barth, one of the guys they tried to make fun of. Uh, so who actually started? Tim Barth is the creator of the Incognito. I never yeah. asked them because I feel like they felt they they felt like everybody copied them. So I don't really know who's doing well, what. And- you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Right. That's right. totally cool. Um, but there's facts involved in these okay, things. So right? give, us, give us a fact. So like Tim Barth, from my explanation, because he explained it to me, was... He had an idea. They were all in a group chat. Okay. They shared the idea. Crickets, nothing. Fast forward six months, Ripitune's releasing the Incognito, which is literally his design, his baby, what he worked on. 
And uh, it was Tim Bart and FAS that did it together. I think yeah. they, they produced it. And then, you know, I can't say that Rippa did, you know, what Rippa did was a bad taste and unethical, but they, you, you can't release a product on the internet yeah. without, without a, you know what I mean? And yeah. think it's going to be safe. So I, I understand um, it's, it's cutthroat and it's, this is a business that when you learn it, it really hurts. But once you learn it, you're going to be 10 times better. So, so is there, was there like any type of lawsuit? Cause I mean, that's kind of, I, I don't, I don't know that detail of the inner workings. Um, okay. I know that the Ripa design though, because they didn't have all the details. Right. So the Ripa design, when you make a pulley, right, you cut grooves in it. Right. And the grooves have to have to be a different shape than the belt grooves so it has something to bite into right right ripa did a v groove because they didn't know what they're doing and the predator has an actual like box groove so the ripa tune incognito it freaking um chirps the belt doesn't line up they used uh bolts that rust it's just like a shit design and they sold thousands of them it's like insane you know how we used to have a joke in here that we used the incognitos as door stops because I used to get a customer like once a month that we'd pull. Remember how many we had stacked up in here? I actually literally went onto the forums and I was like, yeah, you can, anybody can get them for 50 bucks a pop. Like I'll give you bolts that won't rust too. Like, <laughs> like yeah. but, um, they didn't really speak too much into detail about it. Um, it was just a lot of, a lot of things going on in terms of like calling people out. So I didn't really get into. The it's crazy to it. call people out, but not street race. That, well, that, that back. they weren't, they weren't. Well, I think it was more um, Tony who was calling more like the BMWs. Yeah, out. Tony's um, the uh, the minion. It's I mean, it's pain. It's painfully obvious. Steve's the brands. Tony's just along for the ride. But I mean, shout out to both of them. I have yeah. no look. I'm just I'm just the host, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that I think that. um the vibe I got was just more like everybody else is copying what they're yeah, doing. And it's crazy because like our inspiration for the turbo kit on a track hog is this individual. His name's James Mann. He's okay, had a so twin. So talk about this real fast because he had, obviously it's here for a reason. Well, the turbo kits for the track hogs are the new future, right? Um, twin, twin turbo. Twin turbo, single turbo. We haven't really figured out yet what, what works best. By the end of the year, we'll know. But for all out performance from zero, the turbo will outperform a blower, right? Okay. Not for driving experience, not for daily driving. I'm talking A to B from zero. The turbo will and can be faster, right? So we spent this whole year perfecting the supercharger, the Whipple, right? Okay. We culminated the end of the year by having the world's fastest track clock. That's done. If a customer comes here, I can say, hey, I have a proven recipe for the Whipple. Look, it's faster than everybody else's. Now it's time to focus on a turbo. So I can give somebody, if that's what they want, mm -hmm. we have that product. And um, So how does this compare to what's out on the market now? Well, it doesn't compare to anything out in the market. Uh, I know it's my competitors, they, they repurpose stock headers and they use these turbos that, that have grease. You're right. So a grease turbo essentially is just a shortcut. You don't have to worry about doing an oil feed, oil return. It's a way more inefficient turbo. It's literally there for like the Sunday Cruiser Fox body race car. It's not like a daily driver piece, right? It wasn't even designed for that. And um, these, these are comp turbos, right? Yeah, comp turbos. Right. Now, comp makes a great product. And let me be clear, the, the grease turbo in its idea is a great idea. It's just not for a daily driving $100,000 vehicle. Um, you know, like a track hawk owner can get anything they want. A $100,000 Jeep that gets eight miles to the gallon. These guys aren't worried about cost and this and that. They just want the best. That's why right. they bought the track hawk. That and I strive in my business to give people the best with no shortcuts. And a comp grease turbo cut onto the back of a cook's header is a shortcut that you're dealing with. And then uh, furthermore, having a turbo down low limits the use of the car. You know, you can't right. go through a puddle. You can't go off road in your TRX. I didn't ask them that, but that was one of the concerns that came up when they mentioned that they had. The in in the, the industry, that's, that's the biggest thing I see when anybody harps on the kit. Now, let me be clear. The mm -hmm. kit has performed. Right. In, in certain situations, I've seen it perform. Um, but, you know, like they, they went out of their way to say, 
our track hawk was having problems all day and this and that. Yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit. But but when we're I haven't seen like when we were at Modern Heaven Shootout, mm -hmm. they were popping couplers. They ate five turbos. They broke multiple axles. Draghawk's fuel pump died. Like, there's nothing we could have done about that. That's not a tuning issue. Just died. There's nothing we could do. We actually ordered overnighted a new one, and it didn't get here in time, and that was the end of it. So after our race from Adam, the next day, the car died, and they've, <laughs> they've been posting the videos of the car, yeah. like, cutting fuel. And, and it's, I, had to, I had to use that for the edits. So yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry, I'm no, no, no. That. It happened. <laughs> hey, hey, it happened. It's real. So can you break. talk about that? Like, yeah, what, no, what the, parts uh, break. We push things to the limit. I'm not trying to be like everybody else. So we're going to have problems that other people don't have, of course. Right. And um, the only way to solve a problem is to have it. And mm. we, keep, we keep finding what's going to be a problem and finding the solution. Um, I mean, Draghawk, the world's fastest Draghawk, raced all summer long. I mean, I know you saw it. We raced everybody down in Maryland, and uh, we didn't lose. The truck's actually undefeated on the street. Um, we're trying to lose. We, we called out Hezzy. We called out Keiju. Um, I know when we get it back after Texas, we're going to race the GTR. Um, I want to race Hezzy back. He's been ducking me ever since that race. I can't get his little squirmy. I'm trying to get him, but he won't <laughs> lock in with us. Yeah, yeah so well, I, this, I mean, that's how it is. He's a... Uh... Like hey, he met, he, yeah. he parlayed his position right. to where he's at. I commend him. I'm doing. The, I'm trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. No beef with that. I just want to get my race back. It's been like three years. Like, when are you gonna lock back in, bro? I think but, he's right now trying to get his car ready for Texas. Well, we're gonna did, be in Texas yeah, too. So. He made a statement that he has to kind of, you know, make happen because that's a lot of pressure on him. But he's outside. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I know he's outside. I'm in the group chats trying to bully. Yeah. We got a blue Durango up there. We got a white Durango, the one behind me that stepped on that G80 out there. And, uh, you know, we just want to be active. We want to get out on the scene. All my customers that come to me, I'm, I'm really lucky. Everybody wants to go fast. Right. And I'm, I'm lucky in the sense that I have customers that know what that entails. So I'm really, I'm really blessed in that regard. We don't get people that just want to do something simple. Right because of the body of work we've done, people know we can send it or we can do this. I can make your dream a reality. And I, I try to tell that to people, tell me what you want and let me work because I haven't failed yet and I don't plan on it. So can we circle back to this? Because you, you mentioned to me earlier that there's nobody else doing this. So, right? so. there's nobody else doing an under bay tr track hawk kit, right. um, under hood track hawk kit. This is gonna be an oil fed turbo kit that uses a precision turbo or Garrett, depending on what actually works the best. We all don't want all V band. Yeah, this isn't going to be a kit that has a coupler popping ever, because um, it's not going to have any. It's going to be full V band. It's going to be plug and play. It's going to be tested. We developed our own turbo cam, but what's most special about our header is that it's a two inch runner to a three inch uh, collector. We mm -hmm. use a billet collector that gives a less turbulence where the pipes meet right. a lot of people just stuff it in there this kit was built without cost being an op like a concern this is just the best of the best if you said hey james i want the best turbo kit yeah. the best turbo manifold this is what you would design and um at what price though doesn't matter so basically well let's say if you want to just run the uh so the like the, so and then figure to out your just to later. make these manifolds right after shipping right and you know, you got to say, let's say we ship eight out. One comes back for an issue, right? That's right. like normal business. You know, your, your cost to make something like this is like $4,000. It's right. not it's not cost efficient, but the best is never cost efficient. It's the best. Are these made to order or they're... they're no, we're produced? planning on making an initial run of 50. Okay. Um, we're debuting this kit in Texas 2K. And, uh, You're going to run it there. Yeah, we're going to run it in the heavyweight class with our 3.8 Whipple truck, the world's fastest track hawk, which we plan on spraying um, for the event. We're going to set. We're going to let it all hang out. But uh, we're going to debut oh. this year. And this whole year, we plan on street racing this truck and just really pushing it to find what the limits is, what's going to break, so I can create this recipe for my customers. And, what do you think the the uh, the issues you know? Well, c well could really, be. really. The, the only issue is that the block is going to be able to hold 2,200 horsepower because that's our target. 
Um, 2200 horsepower. 2200 horsepower. My dream at RSP is to make like a UGR Lambo, but in a Jeep. I want to give somebody a 2000 horsepower Jeep. You could put the family in and go to the restaurant or whatever. Like, you know, hit a button, turn up the boost. Like, I want to keep going till I have that recipe solved and given to people. Um, I take Workhorse is really where I got the idea from. Workhorse has a certain package where they, they have a one year warranty on like a 1500 wheel horsepower package. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, on oh, what cars? Any on GTRs. 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 Okay. They're the kings of yeah. GTRs. Um, and I just wanted to emulate that. I just, you know, and that's what I'm striving to do uh, is make a package with crazy performance and be able to warranty it and tell you, hey, it's going to live. And the only way to do that is to do it on your own stuff with your own money on your own time. And that's what we've been doing. Now, if you have an unopened block, you can run this or you have to. It's a no, no, no. You could run us. This, this is totally scalable, right? Okay. This kit is scalable to a single turbo to run with a supercharger or up to twins, right? Okay. We want to make every option available. Uh, we don't want to make this kit unobtainable because right. it's, you know, but we plan on <laughs> making 2200 with it. So I, uh, I, I literally can't wait. This stuff keeps me up at night, so. Are there any other limitations, though, in terms of, like, drivetrain when it comes to making that kind of power? We we, we haven't found it yet. Okay, so um, you'll figure it out at Texas, yeah, I'm assuming. Well, right. well we're, we're going to figure it out once we start putting yeah, it out on the street and stuff, and stuff yeah. but I guarantee you the turbo kit won't put more stress on the transmission than a 3.8 Whipple making 1,600 wheel. So um, I'm pretty confident with our hard parts. We work with simple speed and performance. Uh, one thing I want to talk about is the ZF8 transits, though. Okay. So I think you were talk. Were you talking about that in the live chat also, or yes. somebody else? Yeah. Right. So the ZF8 trans, there's some, there's a thing like Montefane was bringing up the battle between the Hellcat and the BMWs, mm -hmm. and I think I I wanted to speak on that because they people think they're so wildly different, but they have one common denominator. They have the same exact transmission. The ZF8 transmission. If you look, the fastest cars on the street all run the ZF8 transmission. Period. Whether it's um, the Aston Martins right now, they just released one with the ZFA, mm -hmm. all the Audi RS6s, all the BMWs from the 340s up to the S58s have a ZF8 style transmission. Right. Um, Rolls Royces actually have them. It's crazy how many cars have them and how they perform. There's no other transmission that puts the power to the ground with authority off the foot brake like the ZF8. And that allows cars to leave like that and right. that's that's basically what makes the 340 so vicious you could just power break it boom go mm -hmm. it's the same thing with the track hawk you can stall it up to 1800 come off the brake it's gonna work right um i mean what other stock transmission is holding a thousand foot pounds of torque like a track hawk trans there really yeah. isn't um i think you you brushed on it on that episode eight seven stock motor stock trans it's like are you kidding me um that's that's pretty pretty uh pretty impressive um and tuned by edgar right my guy dsm lights so. i think i think a lot of the um issues with the with this platform is i guess the weight that people were just got to make more power yeah that's i mean that's 2200 power um yeah. but i think that people were saying uh when it comes to like the best v8 uh steven had mentioned that it was I, you heavy. know there's there's a lot of things that me and steve disagree on did you agree with what he was saying i 100 percent I, I just did a Hellcat last week with drop-in pistons and rods on a stock crank that made 1,500 wheel on a hub dyno. I don't know what LS on a stock crank is going to be making 1,500 wheel reliably. Um, he said unopened, though. Un, I mean, unopened. Like, unopened. Like I'm saying 1,500 wheel. I've, like, one of our biggest packages here is our stage one. Um, it's basically, I, I call it stage one, and people are like, oh, are your stage one's everybody else's stage three. I don't see any reason to waste time with the little bullshit mods. I want you to have mm, the maximum performance with the maximum reliability, and that's the beginning of what I offer you. The point is, the ZF8 is the common denominator in every fast street car out right now, and I truly believe that. Do you think that transmissions are what's playing a role in a lot of the records that are being broken? Yes. With these newer cars? Yeah. If you if you look, like, all these cars were going, like, high nines, and then, like, something happened. But 
and everybody broke into the eights. Mm -hmm. Hezzy was the first with the BMW. Now I feel like I see an eight second BMW every day online. No problem. <laughs> Same with the Trackhawks. And I truly believe that the reason these cars are able to do that is the ZF8 transmission. I agree. Uh, I agree. There's other cars out there that are making this kind of power, but don't perform as consistently on the street or the track. And I mean, if you would have told me five years ago, BMW would be going eights, I'd be like, yeah, right. Right. But it is like a thing. And uh, I mean, we're building a G80 right now. We have it outside. Uh, so can you talk about that setup? Because most of the guys in New York are running BMWs and obviously New York has all the fastest BMWs yeah, at the well, moment. So. We, we do work on BMWs here. We, we do motives, reflex installs. Mm -hmm. we, do all, we do it all. Um, if you're in this area and you need an install done, for high performance we're really the go-to um but the b58 s58 or uh like they like to call the x58 platform is hands down um dollar per dollar the fastest thing you can get right now because the track hawk you can make fast just as fast as the g80s but you're going to spend three times as much right um our g80 we built motor simple built trans uh, in T case, we're doing KLM turbo kit on it, mm -hmm. 7275. And like that thing's going to go eight. So I'm like pretty sure like when that thing comes together, you're going to be seeing that purple M3 up in New York going after. I've really wanted, I want Hezzy in it. Like I want Hezzy bad. But <laughs> and any, but any, any car? car, anything he'll line up with me because his mouth has been bad. But like in the chat you're talking about or it, just in general? not bad, bad, because we, we do talk when we do bounce ideas off each other from time to time. And I, I try to tell him things I learned to try to help him with his cars sometimes mm -hmm. and things like that. But I definitely want my race back like bad. <laughs> so what made you want to get into BMWs, though? Like why? Why? How is that like? A I, you I figured here? with what I've learned in the Hellcat platform and starting to tune and really seeing what makes these vehicles go fast. It's what pushed me to realize that the ZF8 was the reason that what these cars that, are performing. Yeah. And it intrigues me to deal with any car with that transmission. Because mm. I feel like I'll be able to extract the same performance that I extracted in these vehicles out of those. Right. Um, everything else is all mechanical. Everything else. Thing. Yeah. This and is just every platform I've touched, I've risen to the top. I've had the world's fastest S65. I had the world's fastest 211 E63. I touch a track hog. I've had it for two years. I'm the fastest in the world. The G80 will be no different. And then the C8 after that, because right now the company's roadmap this year is to finish the turbo kit, capture the world record or compete for it with our turbo kit, and then parlay everything we've learned into making a turbo kit for the C8 Corvette, mm. because I feel like that's like the natural progression of what cars will still be out here moving towards 2030 right. with electric cars coming, there's really not a new performance gas vehicle coming out besides what's the, the G80s or the C8s. There's, that's it. Yeah. I but, think um, there was some mention of a hurricane or something like that coming out too or something like that. There, like there's uh, the Dodge is coming out. Um, I better, it's better to say Stellantis because that's the people that own all the smaller companies. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dodge is coming out with a twin turbo straight six. Right. That's um, what was mentioned. On yeah. The, uh, it's the hurricane yeah. motor. And um I'm really excited about it. They have it already out in um, a Jeep right now in mm -hmm. the WK. Well, it's not a WK anymore, but the 24 Ger Grand Cherokee, you can get that motor. Um, it's literally, it's more similar, in my opinion, to an N55 than it is to a B58 because it uh, has dual high pressure pumps and things like that. Or I guess you could say it's closer to S58 than a B58. S58, yeah. 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 Um, but it's going to be a stout motor. Uh, anything with turbos means you can just play with the tune and make power. Right. So, like, I'm excited. We can't wait to get our hands on one. I definitely plan on tuning it. Um, but the GPEC 3, or I think it's GPEC 5, which is the ECU that those vehicles are have, is still locked. So it's not like anybody can play with it yet. Do you guys have an issue as well? Like, because I know, for example, the B58, the 2020, I have a 2020. So that's... On, you know, you can unlock those. Yeah, pre twenty pre June, right? Exactly. 20, yeah. twenty. You can do a twenty one if it's uh pre -June. pre June, right? And then anything after that, you have to send out. Yeah, we, like we we had to send ours to Finland, I think, right. for the Femmo. Is that where it's happening now? Because I know initially when it was being sent out, it was over in uh, Ukraine. Ukraine, yeah. Well, I yeah. think with the issues in Ukraine, 
they moved it to Finland to like alleviate anybody's concerns, which right. is a big one. Right. Um, but yeah, the Femme Unlock, like once once you get your Femme Unlock, your car is like a monster. But uh, how, so do you know any? Do you, how much do you know about this? Uh, the unlock with the BMW. Well, the the process. There's like a few different ways you can get your ECU unlocked. You can get it unlocked. You can get it cloned. You right. can get it set up for ECU tech. What we personally did under direction, I was working with Visconti on this, was uh, he wanted us to do a clone DCU so and so we could run like the port injection with the reflex right. system. So that's what we got. Um, we're actually having P2 build our motor. Um, P tuned? P tuned, yeah. P2 tuned? Is that a, yeah, P tuned. Yeah. The super guys, they're, they're like number two on the super list right behind John. Um, they're actually local to here. So uh, I had them build my motor. I wanted John to build the motor, but I couldn't get him on the phone. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I ended up going with P2. I was going to get it from KLM, but I don't know. We just felt good with P2 tuned. He, he gave me good vibes. And uh, we're just waiting for that motor to come back. And then you'll see that car outside every night. How long has he, how long has he had the motor? Probably about 60 days. Do you think it's going to... Be there for a while? Uh, no, I should be picking it up shortly. The holidays, you know, having Thanksgiving and Christmas over those two months kind of takes three, four working weeks out of it. But uh, how much I, is this costing to, to build this? So over there, P2 is charging us about like, I think it's like 15 grand for everything we're doing with the, with the cams. Um, we also got a three, four stroker crank that we're waiting for to be built. Three, at, four. Yeah, we're we're. We actually have two motors for our S58. We have a 3.0 and a 3.4. We're going to see what works the best, what doesn't break parts, and whatever works is what we're going to see outside. But we plan, especially me, I plan on conquering that platform just like I did the Trackhawks. So. It's funny. Everybody's going for that. We got RK Tunes, Merrick and Powerhouse, Rick M. Life. STI Mikey, of course. Well, who, who was, Mikey. I think Visconti's the only one with records, right? Right. No, I th uh, what do you mean? Records? Well, Visconti's though at the top of each respective B58 platform, right? Mikey. Mike, STI Mikey is? Yes. So he's had he's had the fastest um, B58. He also has now the 340 and the, the G80 he just picked up. So everyone's like trying to... Yeah, I'm telling you, the G80 is what's hot right now. I mean, no, of it, course. It's, it's, it's a newer it's, platform. It has... It's two, literally two a 3,500 well. pound track hawk. That's what I look at it. It's like, it's a track hawk. Minus 15, 2,000 pounds. It's insane. Right. Uh, M Life just posted the weight on it, 3,600 pounds. Mm -hmm. Like, I cannot wait for ours to be done. He won 8.5. Yeah, 8.5. Yeah. And he blew the motor up right before the 1,000 foot. So there I don't know if he blew it up or if it yeah. just had an issue. Um, when you're doing stuff that nobody else has ever done in the world, you can't even knock it. Things happen. You're trying to do something nobody ever has done. So you're going to have issues. But it's how you fix that and come back. That's what defines you. It right. doesn't really matter. Um, it's not like those guys did anything wrong. Yeah. They were pushing it. And you have to break something to fix it. And I, I, I truly believe in that. Do you think that, um, and no disrespect to obviously Rick, but if you blow your motor and, and you have a really fast pass, is that something that you look at and say like, oh, this platform can do this even though it blew up? When it comes to blowing up motors and like things happening at the track, it, it, it not to kind of change the question, but it depends on the customer and the expectation the customer had. If you go to the, to the track with your customer and you're like, yeah, everything's going to be good. And the thing nukes, like that's not going to be okay. Right? Right, right. But if you have a customer who's like, Hey, we're going for it. And you send it and something happens. Who cares? Right? Well, that was his personal car. Yeah. I mean, who cares? Oh, yeah. I, he, everything we did and curated and learned tuning, I learned on my own cars. I have a Trackhawk and I have a Challenger Hellcat. Um, I bought those cars because I realized when I was starting to tune that I needed to be able to learn these things and know what I'm actually doing. If somebody's coming to my shop because at the end of the day, if something happens to their car, I'm on the hook. Right. So that, you know, that's why I ended up, I get my cars and I push them. I tried things. We put it on methanol. I've blown up 426s. I've done everything you're not supposed to do. So I can tell you, we can't do that. Mm. I learned, I learned the hard way with my own stuff and with my own money. And, uh, I feel strongly about our opinions because of that, because I know what's going to work and what's not because it's worked and it hasn't. Right. You know what I mean? It's pretty simple, 
but it's not to others. So, so how what what do you have done in your car? Because you don't really talk about what so, your setup is. The world's so fastest track hawk. The world's fastest track hawk runs a Demon TKM four twenty six. Um, Demon is a is a Gen three Hemi shop located in South Carolina. Okay, um, they're on the leading edge of all the innovation for this platform. Um, I want again. I want to be here today. If I didn't forge that relationship with those guys, they've helped us a ton. Daniel Jacobson, their lead tech. I mean, genius. And he's always a phone call away when we were starting, and allowed us to really like push and and things like that. But uh, so it has a TKM 426. It has a simple speed and performance transmission uh, and T case. It's rated for 2,000 horsepower. Um, wow. yeah, it's insane. <laughs> we actually took the stock fuel tank out as we started making big power and really pushing the RPMs. Um, a triple pump with booster pump still wasn't enough. Really? And a triple pump's rated at 1600 horsepower on ethanol and we're losing fuel pressure. And I was like, there's no way there's something wrong with the pumps. We replaced all three of the pumps. We put booster pumps. We still had the same issue. So we actually had to put a fuel cell in the back of the truck. It right. got that fast. Um, we run a 10 gallon per minute air motive pump, uh, brushless pump, which as we found out, isn't too reliable. Really? Um, well, it's not, I, I think the pump, the pump is designed to run like methanol cars, pro mods, big right. stuff. And the application we put the pump in wasn't what it was designed to do. So like the pump failing at modern Hemi shootout, it wasn't my fault, but I don't necessarily think it's the pump's fault. We're doing things nobody's done. So we're running into issues nobody's had so right, right we're still trying to find the way to give the best fuel delivery um we're working with elixir right now they actually make the fuel pumps for the lamborghinis uh the twin okay. Tyros and the huracans to do an in-pump brushless solution um there's a few things on the on the forefront but the second you take a supercharger off these cars the f the fuel demand goes down exponentially there's something people don't understand about a supercharger a supercharger has parasitic drag so for my supercharged engine to make, just to make the numbers easy, 1,500 wheel, mm -hmm. I have to spend 250 horsepower spinning a supercharger. Right, because it's working off of the whenever. Yes, yeah, so you have your parasitic drag, right. and then you've got your drivetrain loss, which is going to be another 15 to 18%. So you could confidently say Draghawk making 1,500 wheel is probably producing 2,000 horsepower at the crank before you account parasitic drag and drivetrain loss. Now, I can make that same 1500 wheel with a 1700 horsepower engine running turbos. So, right. So, by relieving the parasitic drag, I'm going to be able to give somebody a solution, a motor that will live year in and year out at this power level. Because what we found, once you start getting to the 1500 wheel with the 3 8 Whipple, I mean, you got mains wiggling around. I mean, you're, you're, you're doing things to the motor that it was never, never ever designed to, do, yeah. like, designed to do. And the motors that are designed to take that kind of abuse are like 50 grand. They're noon and billets. Right. That's not even really an option. So for me to come to my customers and be like, hey, you want this level of performance, then the question is, how much maintenance do you want to deal with, right? Mm. And the and if they don't want a lot of maintenance, I can't really give them that solution right now. Um, you know, besides what they say, you know, the Ripatoon trucks, anything going this fast needs a lot of maintenance. The Ripatoon trucks break axles left and right. I see transmissions blowing up, turbos exploding. They went through like five at Modern Hemi Shootout. And um, we had one fuel pump die. <laughs> and across their fleet of cars that they brought they had like five turbos die i know adam and jimmy broke act broke axles which is part of racing yeah especially yeah. when you're going 860 i don't knock anybody for that but uh they sure call the kettle black when i break apart <laughs> yeah they were, they were saying that you were over there trying to you know take your car apart and i think he, he called it a honda civic uh, yeah tin well can. It, it it is gutted and um but it isn't not any more gutted than Adam's truck. And furthermore, neither one of those trucks... You have door panels? Uh, yeah, we have. We run the front door panels. The rear door panels are off. Um, still need power windows. A yeah. streetcar. No, well, he, he yeah. mentioned that. He mentioned yeah. something about door It's panels. just crazy. But I, I get it. You know, they got to justify why they got beat so bad at that race. So, like, they're, they're scrambling. But, uh, you know, neither... All three of their trucks they competed with, none of them had an exhaust that came past the rear bumper. <laughs> they're telling mm. me i pulled the exhaust off the truck <laughs> like what do you mean the exhaust hasn't been on that truck since i raced gino in august so it's like 
Yeah, that's that. that you mentioned it's that it's yeah. like you know, it's it's real easy to to say when nobody's saying anything back. And I'm not trying to get into the the, the he said she said, but it, that well, it was truck, on the episode. Yeah, saying, yeah, that truck has been performing flawlessly, beating everybody on the street in the whole state of Maryland all summer long, culminating with decimating the world's fastest track hog at the track. It's not a one hit wonder. It's a, it's a fact. This is a proven recipe that, you know, if you look at my shop, you can see we have people lining up to get. And um, the turbo kit will be the same thing. Yeah. And uh, so I, you're going to run that on that truck. No, tur no, track hawk will forever be the baddest Whipple track Whipple, hawk okay. ever, ever built. Ever. Ever. Period. It goes right now. The, the only person that runs a similar setup to drag hawk with no nitrous went 8.9 at 153. Our first shakedown pass, we went 8.6 at 164. And we were using the same parts as everybody else. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not gonna trying to say where there's that much better, but I don't think anybody has spent more time behind the track hawk steering wheel and laptop than me. So the reason why we have performance so different is because of that time I invested. Nobody, I can guarantee you, nobody's Christmas night on the laptop. You know what I mean? I'm wrapping gifts and I'm trying to tune a guy in Dubai. Like that's, <laughs> you know, every day it's track hawk. It's this, this Hellcat. It's this mission to go faster. I wake up, I, I go to sleep thinking about it. I dream about it. I just want to keep going faster. How do I make more power? How do I make these cars live? And here we are, you know, we're two years in, we've built the fastest track hawk in the world. Um, we're bullying the street scene from here to New York. Uh, you know, like my guys, my guys in New York, one stock and Mar, I think Mar with the F80, F80 Mar, Mar yeah. he's going to bring us his SRT when he's, uh, when he's ready, when he gets some scratch up. And, um, I know before one stock bought that M2, he was talking about getting a track hawk, but I'm glad he got the M2 because he needed to be back in a Beamer in my opinion. Um, yeah, it's just right for him to be back in a Beamer. The Audi was cool. had crazy performance. Yeah. But one stock in a Beamer, it just fits. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah. He's I, the king of the platform, I feel like. Yeah, he, he definitely is. That's not even a question. But he I think just left it alone. He just left it alone. Right. So yeah. I think right now, I think he's just getting used to it again. You know, it's, it's been some time. I'm telling you, that M240 is going to be a problem. <laughs> no, it is. But it's, it's, it's crazy problem. that, you know, he's he literally got that car. It was like, a, what, a month already? And mm. it's just like fully I mean, fully done when you're indoctrinated to this lifestyle that's just what it is yeah the second i get a new car tune it tcu tune see like especially in the benzes the second i get it i'm not even leaving the dealership like i, I just bought my wife the new e63 mm -hmm. i tuned it literally at the dealership before we left really yeah i can't drive a stock car for the life of me yeah what are those cars what do those cars go for when you're tuning it? Is it expensive for those? So a a oh a Mercedes, there's nothing more expensive than a Mercedes tune. Okay. So a Mercedes tune, number one, on a late model Mercedes, so like 2017 plus, they have an engine called the M177, which okay. is a hot V. A hot V puts the turbos inside of the V and the intake on the bottom where traditionally you would see an exhaust manifold. How so does, it's, how does that work? It's called a hot V. So it's backwards. So where the intake usually is on top, right that's center. where the exhaust manifold is, right. and then you, your intakes are on the side. So Mercedes came out with oh, this I'm motor. Sure. So you can literally swap turbos in like an hour on a hot V Because everything's right there. Right right there. The w cars that use the hot V, um, the Urus, the the Audi 4.0 TT, the 4-liter V8 star hot V. Do they heat soak, though? No. Because of? Okay. Because you, you're, you're, you're controlling the heat to one area of the engine bay instead of two. Got so you. the car is designed to flow air and channel it down. It's actually better because right. your intake manifolds are on the bottom of the engine. Mm -hmm. Which is where cooler. It's just cooler. Right. You have air coming up, which is more accessible. Um, they're, you know, it's just it's a far superior design. I mean, my dream for a Trackhawk would be making a hot V because you could deal with the packaging of putting the turbos in the engine bay and 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 deliver. Like it would work. I've I've worked with it ton and but you probably can't put something like that in the oh it, it would fit two two, two of them would fit you would cascade them so you would take it and you would do one forward and you would put an s cover and then okay. you would do one cascaded back uh, but so then it'd be like this way no right? no no it'd be 
it would be like more, if you're facing the car it'd be like you'd be yeah towards you okay. yeah right so you can and stack them basically you stack them gotcha. yeah and uh this right here is actually a 76 75 gen 2 precision this is what we plan on running on our track hawk twin of these right um it should give us like 2600 horsepower worth of turbo and these so, are all twin scroll right yeah uh, no 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 these are single scroll single v band scroll. yeah okay. um gen 2 precisions billet, billet uh center section basically all the bells and whistles right. uh the goal for this turbo when we put it in the truck is to literally make the fastest jeep ever um there's a wk1 jeep which was the precursor to these okay um he has a record at 806 at 173 so he's who i have on top of my board that's 806 806 at 173 and i think it was done at altitude too um he sold the car in 2018 so that record that's it so like that's what i've got my goal set on this year i want to go i really want to make a seven second track hog but at the minimum, I want the fastest Jeep in the world. Now, you think to get to seven seconds, you're going to need a, a turbo setup with this car? Yes, okay. 100%. Now, do I think I can do it with a blower and nitrous? 100%. I really do. Do I think it will live? No, I don't. I think it's a, it's going to be a you know couple pass, glory passes, then you're going to have an issue, which is okay for some people if the budget allows it. Draghawk doesn't give a shit about it. Draghawk yeah. owner doesn't care about anything. Holtz tell me to send it. I'm usually backing him down from the cliff like, bro, let's just ease <laughs> into this, please. He's, uh, you know, I'm so lucky that I have customers like that behind me that allow me to play and, and, and push and try and break and just wiggle, I like to say. And uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, Draghawk's owner, I was so lucky to get him. He just, he called me out the blues from Texas. We're still a small shop at the time, and he was like, "Hey, I want to send your truck up there." You know, I want. First, I tuned it. He was tuned by Ripatune. This is another funny story. Uh, uh -oh. Draghawk was tuned by Jared, who's who's uh, Ripatune's main tuner. And okay. um, same truck, same parts. Goes to the track, goes nine eighty. This truck right here. Yeah. And um, I retuned it. It went nine twenty. At the time, it was like the fourth track, fastest track hawk in the world. Same exact, no part change, no pulley change, just my calibration to theirs. And uh, from that day on, Draghawk was a believer. He was sold. He's, he's, if I were to get married, he'd probably be one of the best men now. He's just one of my best friends. And, uh, you know, after, yeah, after that, yeah. like, it's a relationship I've forged probably for the rest of my life. And uh, he was like, how can we go faster? <laughs> I was like, send the truck up here. We uh, we did a 426 with a 30 Whipple. Our fastest time with the 3.0 Whipple was like 9.04 at 153, but it was like 2,600 DA. It was in June. It was mm. hot as hell at MIR. And then we put the 3.8 Whipple on, and it was just like, I was stuck at that, Fat Boy remembers, I was stuck at that 9.0 level, and I couldn't get through it. Like, I couldn't break through 9.0. I was building these packages. People around me are all going eights. Mind you, I'm only focused on what they're doing at the street. Right. But, um. I put the 3.8 Whipple on, and then it was like, oh, yeah. Game changer. <laughs> yeah. Then it was the four or five tenths that I was chasing. Right. And we were doing it, and I'm doing it consistently. On the street, we're running eights in those track hawks. I can build you an eight-second track hawk. It's no problem. We can actually do it in a week. Um, that's what we do here, too. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't have a big shop, and I only have two guys that work for me. Okay. And um, I don't want anybody else to work for me because I'm super – focused on quality if you have a bad build or one issue it's going to cost you an exponential amount of money in the future and the person isn't going to be happy and then you that guy might ever might not mod a car ever again in his life from that one bad yeah, experience that's how it usually happens yeah so i focus on delivering above and beyond to make sure that these guys are happy and you know that all goes to the beginning of defining the expectation of what they actually want and right. a lot of times people do what's easy for them not what's the customer wants and, right right, uh, right i like fight for the customer like, i love to deliver like there's no better feeling than when you go for a ride with them and they're like brand new hellcat with like a pulley and a tin and they're just like this is the best thing in the world and uh we we get a lot of we get a lot of comebacks and third runs with people where we'll build their car they come back they want it faster they mm -hmm. come back they want it even faster and it's almost like a fraternity at that point where you're just part yeah. of the group you're part of the part gang. of the family yeah. yeah that makes sense 
Okay. So, um, is there anybody in Maryland that you're? I mean, you mentioned Hezzy, right? So, is there anybody out here? I know you're trying to get out of so Maryland so Maryland, to go to New York. At this year, especially, I conquered the Maryland streets racing scene. Okay, I beat everybody in a late model car that is outside. Period. Mm-hmm. If you want to come outside and knock on my door, I'm right here. But nobody's knocking. Nobody's knocked since what? Like September? When was the Dell race? It's like October. And yeah, but basically, I ran rough shot through everybody out here on the street. There's not a late model car in Maryland right now that can sit with me, besides probably Dell LMP Z01. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the last two times their car didn't work correctly or whatever. I, I don't know what their excuse was, but uh, what it was the last no race? Hondas? No, the Honda boys here, thankfully, are my friends, so I'm safe. Um, <laughs> it's funny because a lot of the hell like uh a lot, well anybody i mean honda guys are really Hondas putting are on, scary man. man hondas are scary like are you kidding me my boy los he's got a white uh yeah. all-wheel drive honda civic i mean are you kidding me i see that car i used to go out testing with them and it's just like it's fake it's like it just disappears you're like yeah. it gets small so fast that you're like it reminds you of watching like a pro mod go down the track. I know. I saw some videos that were and, earlier that were yeah. And that, and that guy Los, he's dedicated, man. Like he he did everything, his own transmissions. He does a lot of his own builds in the garage. Yeah. I mean, I like being around Los when I was coming up being fast helped me get fast. Just seeing the things they're doing, seeing the dedication mm-hmm. that they had, and wanting to emulate that culminating with us also having records in our platform i'm pretty sure los is the fastest all-wheel drive honda civic on the street period on the street period period on the street i mean he's proven it who's knocking yeah so i, I mean, mean i think he raised these guys the carry out boys are from this area just it was bad i think their car didn't even leave the the light right it was bad they uh he raced he also raced uh the gtr which is a video i saw yeah the um, gtr earlier. that was a wild night Biggest pot I've ever been around. It was like $124,000 total pot. I mean, when I tell you, it was it was bigger than the one stock Dell race. That was about a hundred thousand dollar pot. Yeah, close to it. Yeah, this was like a hundred twenty four thousand dollar pot. I mean, the list of people in it was like Santa's Christmas. It was crazy, and uh, it it was just a crazy race. And I I remember when Los left the line, I was like, I've never seen anything move like that. Like I was standing right next to his car. And uh, that, that was probably the craziest race. I still don't understand how the GTR guys got out of not paying, but when it's that much money, I mean, that's what I'm saying, man. That's what I said before. Like, how does that with all those people and everything, like, how does it even how does it gets work? to a point where, the, you know, like I was saying earlier, like you're outside and you're yeah, around men. Yeah, but there's men. mad people there. You're around men. And, you know, tough guys know not to mess with tough guys, right? Because right. something real is going to happen. Everybody kind of realized that to go to there the is going to be a big level. And I guess at that point, I know I wasn't worth it for me for no 2000 bucks or whatever I had in whatever the Whatever you had in the pot. Yeah, yeah. It, it just, you know, at that night... It, for me, like, I don't even care about the money when we street race. It's all about the glory. I want to win in front of the whole world. It posted on my Instagram all week long. Talk shit. That is what I love. That does it for me. And um, the money, I, I make money in my shop. I, I can make money a million different ways. That's right. not, that I like to get out there, have my boys betting on me and bring it home for them, you know? And uh, that's really my draw, like, you know? That's that's a that's a clip right there. Yeah. I, I'm already visualizing yeah. that because not too many people talk about their you know their passion for it. They do, but like to that extreme where it's like the money doesn't matter. It's more competitive. Where yeah, it's like, like I I literally I could care less about the money. Yeah, I mean um, most people I think I think a lot of the hustling that's happening is because of that reason. But if you take the money out of the you know out of the uh, yes. equation, then it just becomes straight racing, straight heads up, racing. like how it used to be. And that's it. Whoever wins, wins. Like they say, Draggy killed street racing a lot. Yeah. So it, when you have that involved also, that's just like a lot of people doing draggy runs and, and so on. So and I can, I can say I'm guilty of that too. Like when I first came out, it didn't, I didn't even think it. I just wanted to race every yeah. night. I wanted to be faster. I wanted to see if my car was faster. I didn't care really 
if I won or lose. But as my name got bigger, it's like if you lose, you're gonna deal with it all week long. Like yeah. it's gonna be tough. Like you're gonna have to man up and put your chin up and walk into the room. Yeah. And, and you know, like people don't a lot of people are scared to even take that risk. Mm -hmm. I relish it. I love it. I love to be out there, win or lose. I like that. Like, there's no better feeling. Like, you talking about living, you want to feel some stuff? Go out and win a big street race. Go out and lose a big street race. It'll change your life. Like, change I'm your gonna life. Have to, I'm telling you, man, I'm going to have to build a Supra. What Pepper's done with his Supra. That's I, why. He's the main reason, too. I, I'm like, I think it is insane. I'm looking at his drag. He's 27, 60 to yeah. 130. And then I'm sitting there like, how am I going to make a hawk do that? Like, is it even possible? How much power would it take? I think it would probably take like 2,500 horsepower. 2,500 To make horsepower. a hawk do what Pepper's uh, Supra is doing. 60, you mean 60 to 130? In general, period. Wow. But by the end of this year, I'm coming. I'm coming. Turbo. Turbo. I'm going to make that power number. I'm going to fix whatever breaks. I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going to make this package to go north of 2,000 wheel for the track hawk. I, that's really my goal. Once I get it, I'm, there really won't be nuts left for me in the platform mm -hmm. just to provide what we've learned and share it with the people, right. and we're going to move on to other platforms. I think that pretty much makes it clear too that like most shops, why they're building their cars, because that's basically what you're going to do. You're going to basically put on for the platform, show that you're making the most power and yep. you have these kits. And that's just, it's you, you got to figure out what's not going to work. Right. So you can sell what works. Exactly. And the only way to know it's not going to work is to it's fail. To, to fail, yeah. And like the, the guy who went 8.5, he, he's doing it. Like yeah. who cares? He's going to go faster next time out because he learned what he did wrong or whatever happened and he's mm -hmm. going to upgrade it and go out and do a full clean run. I mean, he did a 5.30 in the 8th. It's probably going to be like an 8.30 car, I would say. And 8.30s, like, are we serious? Are we talking about eighth mile times or quarter mile times? Like, when did this change? It, it's yeah. just baffling. Well, that just goes back to the transmission like you were mentioning. it. That's, That's definitely the, the game changer, yeah. which nobody really spoken about um, yet on the podcast. Yeah, because... <laughs> The ZF8, I mean, you put it in second gear, power brake, yeah, gone. It's going to hit every shift. The one thing that really sucks about the BMW platform is the transmission tuning. And that's something I'm really jumping into. Um, there's a device called HTG. It's a standalone trans tu uh, control device mm -hmm. that will allow you to do different things with the trans. Um, right Stop now, you're... Trans, right? No, or XHP. Any, yeah, basically, I'm, I'm referring to how the only option for a BMW to tune a transmission is XHP. Right. And it's limited. You got sliders. So you're telling me you're going to a track with a $50,000 motor and you're hitting sliders on your iPhone? Like, are you kidding me? On a track hawk, I can set pressures. I can set pressures for torque. I can set shift timing. I can set clutch timing. I, you, you have very in-depth control which can allow you to make these transmissions live. And in my opinion, a transmission tune has more to play into the speed of a car than anything, mm. um, especially in a track hawk. You could put, I could race a track hawk with 300 more horsepower, yeah. put a good trans tune and I'm gonna beat them because my car is gonna work, it's gonna hit the shift, it's not gonna cut timing and right. fuel on the shift. It's gonna perform flawlessly and cohesively. People don't really understand that people get so focused on power numbers and the cohesiveness of the build has more to do with the performance of it than power. Power is just one thing. Right. It's how you use it. It's how you put it down. Is it going to work consistently? And like everything we do here, we, we think about this stuff. When we do a stage one, is it going to live? Is it going to break? Da, 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 da. And we've created this package. And I say, look, you bring me your track hawk from bone stock. It's 12,400. I'll build it in a single day. I have all the parts in stock and you'll pick it up. You can take the rear seat out and crack off at nine, seven. Boom. <laughs> like what else do you want for 12,500 bucks? That's pretty That's impressive. Pretty good, yeah. And it, we got, we probably have over half a million miles out on the road now between all the stage one trucks. Yeah. So we've seen it all. We've seen what, you know, what issues we could have and, like I always say, like when we have an issue on one truck, I do like a, a mass update. If I learn something that didn't work, I'll push new tunes out to everybody. Mm. Or I'll say, hey, I figured this out. Or I'll circle back to a guy and say, hey, let's do something. I figured some new stuff out. Like if I tuned you a year ago and I learned something today and I'm thinking like, hey, 
you know, uh, David Sellers, he has that pack. Like, I'll call him up and say, Dave, hop in the truck. I got something for yeah. you. Like, that's what I want. I want him to call me like, bro, it went a tenth faster. Like, what happened? You know, like, that does it for me. I think I think a lot of um, tuners in those situations when they're pushing platforms, um, things get a little, like, weird. I feel like they don't really communicate the best um, well, because they're so focused on, you know, trying to push like those communicating numbers. with the customer or communicating yeah customers and people even even the um the the cars that they have that like are their top cars you know i think they focus more on that and they kind of from my experience i feel like they focus more on the top guys well yeah, yeah everybody makes favorites right favorites right and and what i what i do is i don't really have favorites i have customers and i have customers that spend money with me right mm-hmm if you spend money with me, you're a fa- like you're a favorite. If you're somebody off the street that's not spending money with you, I don't share anything with you. So anybody that's a customer here, there is no favorite. Draghawk doesn't get anything different than you what know what Jim's does. gonna get coming in the door. Yeah. Because that's not our like mission statement. That's not what we do here. Like I want everybody to go fast. I used to I have other people tell me like, Oh, you're giving them everything? Why not? Like, that's what he wants. Like, that's why he's here. That's why he came to me. He wants it to go fast. He wants the maximum performance, and mm-hmm. I'm striving to give it to him. You that's know? the issue, I think, what you just said right there, because there's a lot of people who are known to have, like, the world's fastest platform, and then when you go to them, you're willing to spend as much money as you want. They don't give you – like, you're not running the same time they're running, well, which th- I, could, I could – it makes sense. Well, see, th- this is where it gets to where – is that luck? Did that did that guy have a luck run? That was it just like one glory True. pass, or is it something perfect, that's yeah. consistent that he can reproduce? And that's where it gets hard because, like on a tr- for instance, for a track lock, there's multiple different software versions of the every same year car, so every car tunes a little differently and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I haven't I haven't had the issue. Like if somebody came to me. And they have, and they spent the same money Draghawk makes, they're going to get the same performance. Right. Because I told them before they spent that money, the car is going to do this. Mm. And I'm not going to deliver it till it does, even if I lose money. Because yeah. my word is everything. That's your word, right. And my business wouldn't be where it is if I was going back on my word. Um, that makes period. sense. Yeah. You know, and you like the only knock i've ever had on my business is we might have took too long to attend to somebody which right? was addressed uh, well it wasn't addressed but it was mentioned before it, uh, yeah and, and you know i get episode. it and you know one thing about being in a business and dealing with customers from the wild like i called these people don't know you they don't have they don't know your mom they don't know you know they're in, from the wild they don't care about you they just want what they spent money on and that's where running a business and being a car guy gets hard mm. because you have to juggle and you have to deal with personalities and different things and certain people. Like we had a uh, a real successful bodybuilder guy in the shop, Alex Eubanks. I think he's on the. Yeah. So he mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, you know. And um, great guy. He brought me. I think he brought me he brought me two cars. I think he brought me a Supra and he brought me an R8. An R8. Yeah. yeah. I tuned his R8. He loved it. Everything was great. He pops up with a Supra. When he came with the R8, though, it was just Alex. Right. And Alex by himself, and he would think he was with his girlfriend, a great guy. We hit it off. We tuned his car. I went, I actually bought an auto tuner and then went and found him. We retuned his trans. I went to like his house. He loved it, right? Yeah. Then he got a Supra, but he had his like manager involved, like his handler or something. And the guy, like, uh, it, there was like some misconstrued messages. Oh, coupled with us being really busy and i think he was unhappy with the amount of time it took me to deliver how much time was it i think it was like a month okay that's, that's but what he but said, this yeah. is the crazy thing is when they pick up the car i got somebody i told them how much it costs they come pick up the car it's time to pay the bill mm-hmm. and alex gives me the phone and i'm like, who's on the phone it's some other guy he's like hey i'm his manager like we need a better price like what do you mean you need a better price like i gave you the price that it cost to do it like if it took too long there's nothing i could do about that but the work was done correctly and um what was done though we we put a pure turbo on it and um we had visconti tune it we put a pure turbo on it we put port injection um he actually the real reason now that you mentioned that the reason it took so long is and this is one of my pet peeves is customer supplied parts Okay. Customer supplied parts are always a disaster because I brought you my port injection kit 
that I bought for my boy. Uh -huh. It's got everything. We go, we take the car apart, we install it. It's missing this clip or it's missing, it was missing, I think it was missing the fuel tap and it was missing like some fittings, right? right. And we called, uh, who was it? Was it Boost Logic? I think it was a Boost Logic. Um, I forget actually what the kit was, but we called the company and said, hey, we need those fittings. Well, 14 days went by before I got the fittings. Then we put it in and realized we needed another fitting. Lost a week there. It's mm. like... It's it's impossible to deal and like foretell everything that's going to happen, right? Yeah. And it's really important when you take your car to a shop that you trust them. You cannot take your car to a shop with somebody you don't trust ex completely. Yeah. Because it's just going to be bad. It's going to make the shop owner be upset because he doesn't know what you want. You're changing your opinions and da 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 da. And it's really hard. That's it goes back to what I keep saying, defining the expectation. Right. It's so important to get your customer in and figure out what they want and to define what you can deliver to them and try to stick to that. And like, we lose money here sometimes because I put whatever I said or whatever I'm going to deliver first. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, speaking of, on Alex, you've been, yeah, now I think about it, we definitely were waiting on the parts for his port injection for like probably the whole time he complained about. Um, it probably would have been cheaper for me to just buy the port injection myself and install it than yeah. paying my guys fucking days than to start working on it and not being able to finish and coming back. But that's the part of business. Um, was there an issue with the tune at all? Like in terms of Visconti? And well, Visconti tuned it. It was tough to get in contact with him, which I understand because sometimes I get tough to be getting in contact with when you're so busy and this and that. Um, but I really wanted to work with one of the best people, and I felt like that was what his car needed. Um, it, it made 650 wheel, 650 torque. It was pure stage, pure turbo and ethanol. It was flex tuned. Everything was installed clean. And the funny thing is, Alex sold the car, and the car ended up coming back to the shop, and we continued modding it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like if you're in this area, and you want to put performance parts on your car in the DMV, we're literally one of the top options, if not the best, um, period, you know? Oh, and, I mean, everything, uh, everything you're saying is pretty much exactly what he said. So, like, you know, not yeah, that no, I'm trying to investigate. But yeah, no, 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 where, it's cool. I, Bro, Alec, yeah. Alex was, like, one of the biggest people to first come to. I mean, he's got a guy that has, like, millions of followers. Yeah. He's, like, built like a Roman fucking. He's, like, the top. Yeah. He's, like, like the top. Uh, Top gym influencer. Top gym right influencer. Now. Super cool girl, guy. Super down to earth. Um, yeah, he's 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 really humble. His guy. manager yeah. was a little, uh, I felt like, but um, he was awesome. And and his girlfriend at the time. I don't know if they're still together. They were both no, super cool. Not. But uh, like I mean, that guy's got it going on. He's like twenty. Yeah. How old is he? 22, twenty two. Twenty three. Twenty three. Probably a def definitely mansion. A I've been to his house. Big mansion. Like yeah, he's doing it and. Um, but he's I, cool. He's 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 a very cool guy. He, super I, don't, I don't down think he uh, he definitely was concerned about that. Uh, he mentioned that. Oh, so so it's funny. These guys pop the hood, right? Yeah. And they they send me these texts. And they're like, "Oh, we think it's rod knocking." And I'm like, "What? Like, how could it possibly be rod?" And they send me the video, and it's the DI injectors ticking. Uh. It's like, you know, it, that's where it gets hard dealing with non car people, and then it's especially too, it's not a platform we do all the time. So I can't stand up and be like, yo, we're the best, like with a track hawk. I was like, well, maybe something is wrong or maybe I did something wrong. Um, I think we had an issue too with the coupler popping. So the cup, when you put the port injection, it stretches out the distance yeah, between, the, between the manifold the and the charge uh, pipes, the, right? Right. And there's a coupler in the middle. <laughs> so when we did it, the car went home, coupler popped. Now, if I had done more of those, I would have known that that was an issue. So what I did is he called me, told me the coupler popped. I said, look, no worries. It's Friday night. I'll come there, but I can't get a new coupler to Monday morning. Monday morning, I go get the coupler. I go to his house. I fix it. Now, I never heard from him again until that car actually came, came back, back and, you and he had sold it. And I called him. I was like, bro, the car came back. Like That's crazy. Um, Actually, when I saw him on the podcast, I hit him up. I was like, bro, they're, th they're going to come do me next. He was Pause. like, yeah. So... <laughs> I gotta say false on that, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> don't get a, yeah, yeah, no. But, he definitely wasn't trying to like bash you or anything. No, I think he was I, just I never, his never got that vibe from him. And yeah. like, you know, every 
every experience you have with every shop sets you up for the next one yeah. and, and, and better informs you of what to do and how to deal with these, these people in our industry. We're all kind of the same. Some guys are really out to fuck other people. Mm -hmm. Or excuse me. Some yeah, people are good. really <laughs> out to, to, like, to screw people and take. And I feel like that like our mission statement is all about delivering performance. Like everything I do is performance first. Everything else is going to take care of itself. Right. For the first year, we really didn't make any money. But last year, like it's probable it's working. And all we're doing is doing what we love. We're not making people upset. We're delivering performance and making people smile. Like there's nothing going wrong. <laughs> it's You seem very, like super passionate about this. And I think that when you have conversations with people about other shops, you already have this thing in your head where it's like, damn, this guy sounds like he might not be like the best person to talk to about or even take yeah. a car to. So like every time I meet new people, when, when I come from a different podcast talking about a different shop, mm -hmm. I always like have this image in my head already. You know, I still have to be neutral, but like that's why I love doing what I do because I get to ask questions and see how yeah. you respond to them. Yeah, you I seem pretty like, you know, I mean, like that's what, that's what's know. something that, that like baffles me because you watch that podcast and it would lead you to believe that yeah, we're some hacks yeah. and we're doing this and that. And when the reality is we're the guys in the lab on the street testing on a Wednesday night at one thirty in the morning while everybody's asleep. So on Friday, I can give you a better tune or on Friday, on Saturday, when you go to the testing tune at the local track, you're going to be a 10th quicker. Like nobody cares like we care. And I don't, I'm not trying to say we're just necessarily better, but I guarantee you nobody cares as much as we do. I feel like I, I, I feel like when I get a customer on the phone, we have a customer for life. I've never had somebody come here with a Mopar and be, and be, be upset and not be like one of my friends almost. It's almost like a problem now where I have to kind of disconnect myself from the customer a little bit because yeah. I'm so personable and I'm working with them. We get the truck tuned. And then I'm not as busy with them because I'm on to the next guy. And then pe I kind of lead people on. So I have to be like careful about how friendly I am. And I hate that because I just want to be me. Yeah. But it's owning a business, running a business. It's like a different part of it that's totally different from performance. Right, right. It's like people. People are hard. P yeah. People, Cars people are do easy. people shit. That's people what, are yeah. hard. People like, do people shit. That's what yeah. I learned from uh, my guy, Matt. Um. So yeah, so what are you what are your what are your plans for the next coming, you know, so event or and, in March we're gonna be at Texas 2K pretty deep. Um we got a mansion with the pool. We got uh <laughs> so how far I, how far are you from the track though? About twenty minutes. Damn. So we, we booked uh the other we booked yesterday or something like that? Or last week. We're like forty five minutes away. I mean obviously I mean, that, it's, yeah, it's whatever. But like, you know, you guys will be welcome at my RV, whatever. I appreciate like, it. I, yeah. mean, I feel like you never spend a lot of time at the house though, right? When you're when No, you're not Texas? at the house. At the track, we're going to have the RV there. At the track. Okay. Yeah. Right. So like, if you guys need to like get out the sun, use the bathroom, you're good. Appreciate you're it. Good Thank with you. Good with me. Thank you. Um, but like, I, once I said that I was going to Texas, it's crazy. This, this company, Bailey's. Um, Performance. Bailey's yeah, yeah. Performance. They had the world record track hawk for like right. probably the longest time singularly. And... Um, they were like, you're coming down, Southern Hospitality, our shop is your shop, anything you need. And I just was like, man, like, this is, they're talking to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and it just felt good to know that uh, not everybody reveres me as like the Ripitune guys do, you know? Yeah. And um, this year's all about pushing the limit and delivering, and delivering like, it, what everybody's saying in the group chats right now and the Trackhawk forums and everything is, uh, race for the sevens so we were the first to go eight five in a track hawk and i i feel very confident that we'll be the first to go sevens um you know i don't think anybody's gonna push as hard as we are this year but i'm down for the challenge yeah uh, it's weird once we did get the record there was a month there where i just got complacent like i wasn't staying in the shop late i was going home spending more time with the family um I have three kids, by the way. So, right. So yeah. So, to, yeah, I had to, yeah. but like the, 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 the fire was like blown out almost. And, um, the best thing that ever happened was this podcast because those guys talking crap, it's like, woke you up. Yeah. It woke up the beast and it made me, yeah. Like, I don't feel as accomplished anymore. They didn't learn their lesson. Obviously I'm gonna have to beat them even more this year. Um, like Adam's trucks never beat me. 
I've built two different trucks that beat that truck. A, yeah. Our gray truck beat them, and then the drag hog beat them. Literally never lost. The only time they've ever beat me um, is when I first came in the scene. This is a crazy story. Uh, I started going fast in Maryland. I was undefeated at the time. I think I was like 6-0, and oh, and Ripitune pops in my inbox. And at the time, I had no intentions of opening a shop or anything. Yeah. I was just going fast. I was really excited about what I learned pushing my truck to go that fast. And they were asking me questions, and I was sharing. I was pulling my skirt all the way up, giving them everything, telling them what I tried that broke blowers. I, I, I made a custom pulley, a 246 pulley, and we put it on a red-eye blower. It lasted like 20 miles. Blower, boom, like exploded. <laughs> like, okay, we can't do that, right? And I remember I was excited after we broke it because I found a limit, right? It was my yeah. first thing I broke, and I, and I hit Steve up, and I was like, 246 pulley, too much. Like, don't do it. I figured, you know. And the next thing I see when I'm starting my company is, look at James. He blew a blower up. <laughs> I'm like, are they serious? Like, <laughs> like, what? Like, of course I blew it up. I was pushing it to the limit to find it. Like, right. there's no surprise to me that it broke. Like, you know, um, and then it, it would start. But basically, so they reached out to me and they asked me all these questions. And then two weeks later, I get a knock on a black track hawk from New Jersey this guy jimmy and they're saying oh they'll race you in philly and you know at this time i went nine nine i thought nobody in the world could go faster than that on the street um i was so naive and uh, i go down there and that truck used to have a big ripitune logo on the back window mm -hmm. well when we got there there was no logo on the back window uh, so no i didn't you know i didn't know the scene and i didn't know all i had was my people my family with me right and um you know, I was on a stock blower, stock throttle body, just pulleys in a hot tune, right? Just the basic of basic, like talking about like 5,000 of mods. Jimmy had a 426, 45 Whipple, Bill Trance, the kitten and caboodle, right? Everything. And um, I heard the truck and everybody's like, are you sure? I'm like, guys, I got this. Relax. Like, <laughs> Watch this. Like, uh -oh. And then uh, we ended up, <laughs> we raced in Philly and uh, I beat him to the eighth. Don't get me wrong. I, I treat him and I beat him to the eighth. Okay. But the car made probably like 400 more horsepower than me. It came flying past me at the eighth and he put like two, three cars on me. And then it was the Ripitune Trackhawk next day steps on James from Maryland, you know, and oh, da, 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 da. Shit. And I'm like, those the guys that were just asking me what I did in my truck, that's who I raced. Like, that's when I started to really see that street racing is just – it's you know it's cutthroat right and which is fine i'm not i have no problem being cutthroat yeah i just didn't know i had to be cutthroat you got finesse yeah i got finesse but i learned and <laughs> now i'm their biggest problem because they can't beat me ever and i'm and uh, you know adam said oh let's lock in the track at the end of the episode yeah. well let's lock in i told them they can take their fastest durango and race our fastest Durango tomorrow. The one that went eight four nine mm -hmm. with a thirty five mile an hour tailwind. That's never done it before, uh, or after, yeah. mind you. That was the that's the definition of glory pass. But uh, I told them we'll to race for ten thousand aside at your track. You pick this track. I'll, I'll let you guys get uh, double ball first. Not crickets. But then they're on the podcast saying, "Oh, anybody want to race?" Yeah, you call that anybody except us. That's, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I knocked on the door and ain't nobody answered. So I don't know. So what, what else is what else is next for you outside of the track hawk platform that you well, plan on we, doing this we're, year? We're going to be focusing big time this year, splitting our focus on the G80 platform. Okay, right. Um, you mentioned before, right? Yeah. We're building our G80. Um, we're really excited about our G80. We want to go toe to toe with the guys in New York. We want to show them that I want to show them that I can do anything. Um, and then the C8. I plan on getting a C8 before the really? summer. Um, I think the C8 is like a little bit of a neglected platform right now, especially in street racing. You I don't, don't think see it should be because they're, they're exactly. really good cars. The transmission's in those as well. Oh, that, oh, and yeah. it's a rear-engined car. Um, it, has, it, it can launch. It has good traction. I think it'd be exciting to do the same thing I did with the track hawk with the C8. And my plan for the company is to get a C8 and push and see what we can do with that platform too. Um, it's shying away from the bread and butter of the ZF8, mm -hmm. but I'm up for the challenge, so I'm looking forward to it. Fire. Well, um, 
I do appreciate you. Like I say, every episode, I appreciate every guest. Hey, I appreciate um, you doing yeah. this. I don't know. I, I think you, you seem kind of nervous before, but I mean, I don't know why, bro. You, you're really well spoken. Like I said, <laughs> thank you. you I got nothing it. to be nervous about. Yeah, and you're super knowledgeable too. Um, it's also it's also a cool thing when you can learn from somebody who's been, you know, like the world's fastest cars. Yeah, building yep. them in the shop every day and and testing outside. So uh, one thing I want to say before we, we end is uh. I wouldn't be where I'm at today with the tuning if yeah. I didn't have my my master tech Dan. He matches my quality of tuning and f building parts and setups. He actually makes it happen, and he's just as important as I am because, like, I he's like we're like brothers. At the pit, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we're so intertwined and locked in that like. And now. Um, now I just added Dylan to the team and it's, we have our own fabricator in house and we're really looking forward to like just pushing this platform to the next level. Um, we also have one thing we did that we didn't speak about that I wanted to brush on. We yeah, actually, yeah. last year we built a 70 Chevelle that won second place at Rick Ross's car show. Oh wow. So every year I like to start off with doing one old school. I think it's like a good mission thing for us to do. It, it teaches us a lot. So this year, we're doing a 67 dart. Um, it's going to run a, a Reed Super 80, a Reed Case Super 80 4L80 uh, transmission. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, it's going to run a Hellcat with a Holly Dominator. Um, just to show that we aren't a one trick pony with the Hellcat. We can do a Holly. We can do an old school. Um, we have the accolades. We got second place at the car show. Uh, it's a 70 Chevelle with the LT4. It isn't even a Mopar. We did a Chevy and uh, we did a Holly remote start it, i wow. mean it, it's crazy and uh we did it for this guy um tree is his nickname and uh it was just really so dope. who went first this is the most recent car show we yeah had, the right? most the recent one, one this year yeah 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 oh, okay um first place in and i think it was another chevelle okay but um are there different categories or it's just like for the whole show no no it was different categories so we we got second place for 70s muscle 70s car. muscle car okay. um but when you i mean it costs like 700 dollars for a ticket you're talking about for the, Rick Russ's uh, to car? put your car in the show was like seven hundred dollars just wow. to put your shit on his lawn, right? And uh, the thing about it though, and the 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 what I got from it is like a great networking opportunity. Absolutely, like, yeah. You're meeting just just alone. Like if you cause charge seven hundred dollars for a ticket, mm -hmm. you can guarantee who's buying it isn't a bum. You right. know what I mean? So like That's you're just true. kind yeah. of there with your upper lines. People don't understand price isn't all about what you're getting it's more about like a level of entry you know what i mean right, like right if you can afford it you can play right I, 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 trying to i think you understand that well because you you come from mercedes yeah so. yeah and <laughs> like, uh you get and speaking of mercedes um i have i have a company model works we build okay. um we build like pure turbo style for the m177 we modify stock turbo casings um we have intakes uh, modelworks.com um, he's been my partner from the Mercedes days. He's also my partner on making these ma manifolds. Okay. Um, I want another person in a relationship that I want to be here if I didn't have. A guy's a genius, CAD engineer. If we need a part made, he can pull it up in CAD. Dan can weld it. Uh, excuse me, Dylan can weld it up. Like when when I say the, there's no limit on what we can do, yeah. there is no limit. I believe you. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. So can you tell the viewers where to find you? Yeah, so you can find me at RSPDMV on Instagram, RSPDMV.com. Um, you can come down to Maryland and come find me like in the I back do, of the yeah. Lowe's <laughs> at any given night. And uh, yeah. All right. Well, um, best of luck to all, you know, for all sure. And success. For sure. Um, I think you're going to go far this year. I feel it. I mean, you seem very I, passionate I'm excited, about it. Man. I'm excited for you. And uh, once again, thank you so much for your time and your hospitality here. You definitely took care of me. Of course, um, bro. And even from the phone call to FaceTime, you were pretty like chill. You were like, yo, just calm down. We'll take bro, care I, of you. I was so excited to have you come here and be able to thank share you. with the people. Like, thank I you. really appreciate you. Thank you. So you appreciate good. it. So um, until next time, guys, make sure you guys like, share, comment, and subscribe. Keep listening on all streaming platforms. And yeah, catch you on the next one. Peace.